Hi, I am Georgios Papadopoulos and welcome to this video on six Lopan examples of the IPv6 header compression. In this video, I'm going to give two examples of the six Lopan compression operation. Please note that I assume that you have already knowledge of the six Lopan compression mechanism defined in RFC 6282. As an example, here is the typical 60s protocol stack where the 6 lopan adaptation layer is located below the IPv6 one. The objective of the 6 lopan adaptation layer based on its header compression and fragmentation mechanisms is to enable IPv6 packet transmissions over IEEE 802.15.4 networks. Now, the main goal of 6 lopan compression mechanism is to take the original IPv6 header and add to it a few bits which indicate how the original IPv6 header is compressed. These additional bits that are added for the IPv6 compressed header. Thus, the receiver of the compressed packet by reading these fields of the compressed header can decompress the original IPv6 packet. Now, the first example on 6 lopan compression is on an IPv6 link local multicast address. Here on the left side, we have a typical IPv6 link local multicast address, while on the right side, we have the compressed header, which starts with two bytes, 6 lopan IPv6 header compression encoding, and then with the non-compressed IPv6 header fields. We are going now to analyze field by field uh, the original IPv6 header and to check which field can be elided or compressed and which must be carried in line. First, we have the version field. It consists of four bits and it represents the internet protocol version number. The version field can be elided in all cases since only IPv6 is employed and therefore the value of this field is always 6 or 0, 1, 1, 0. The next field is the traffic class which consists of 8 bits. Uh, the bits of this field represents two values. The six most significant bits hold the differentiated services or diff-surf field or DS field. Diff-surf is used by the network for traffic management and classification and for providing quality of service. The last two bits of the field are used for explicit congestion notification or ECN which allows end-to-end -end notification of network congestion without dropping packets. Next, we have the 20 bits flow label field, which is used as an identifier by source node to label the IPv6 packets that belong to the same flow. For instance, in voice over IP applications. The special flow label zero means the packet does not belong to any flow. The following 16-bit field is the payload length. It indicates the length of the IPv6 payload, in other words, the size of the rest of the packet following this IPv6 header. Then there is the next header field which identifies the next protocol header following the IPv6 header such as ICMP, UDP or TCP. By the way, if you are wondering which protocol the 3A in hexadecimal may represent, you can search for it by typing something like next header IPv6 values or have a look directly at the IANA IANA website. And you should find that 58 in decimal, which is the 3A in hexadecimal, represents the ICMP v6 protocol. Uh, the next field is the hop limit, which consists of 8 bits. It replaces the time to leave TTL field in, IPv in IPv4. 
This field represents the maximum number of routers the IPv6 packet can pass through. The next two fields are the source and the destination addresses of the IPv6 telegram, where each consists of 128 bits. And the remaining part here represents the payload. Now let's analyze the compressed header. First, the dispatched is placed. For a compressed IPv6 telegram, the binary sequence is 0, 1, 1. Now going through the header of the original IPv6, first we have the version field. The version field can be elided in all cases since only IPv6 is employed. Then we have the 2-bit traffic class and flow label or TF field which handles the compression of the traffic class and flow label fields of the original IPv6 header. In this example, TF is encoded with 1, 0. Therefore, only the flow label is elided and the rest is queried in line, as you can see here, uh, the value of the traffic class E0. Next, the payload length field can be elided since it can be inferred from lower layers, either from the 6 lopan fragmentation header or from the layer 2 IEEE 802.15.4 header. Then we have one bit next header field. In this example, it is zero, since the next header field is not compressed, and thus all eight bits for next header are carried in line see the 3a value that is carried in line here. As you can see, the 3a, which is 58 in decimal, indicates the ICMP v6 protocol, for which there is not a compression mechanism yet. Next, the value of the hop limit is ff, which is 255 in decimal. Therefore, this field can be compressed to 1, 1. The context identifier extension or CID field is labeled 0, which indicates that there is not a context that will help to compress the prefix. And thus, no additional CID field is employed. The source address compression or SAC field is also encoded with 0, to indicate that a stateless approach is employed for the compression of the source address, which means that a link local prefix is used. You can verify it by checking the beginning of the source address. Next, the source address mode or sum field is equal to 1, 1, which is the best case scenario in terms of compression efficiency, since it indicates that all 128 bits are elided. Indeed, the prefix, the first 64 bits of the IPv6 address, is link local, and the interface ID, the remaining 64 bits, is formed from the layer 2 source address. The multicast compression, or M field, is equal to 1, and it indicates that the destination address is a multicast address. This is because the destination address in this example starts with FF0. Two, which is a typical multicast address. Then the destination address compression or DAC field is labeled with a zero since a stateless approach is employed for the compression of the destination address. Indeed, a link local prefix is used. The destination address mode or DAM field is equal to 1, 1 since the multicast address has the format of FF02 double semicolon 00xx. As you can see here, we have a destination address that starts with FF02 and it ends with 0001. Therefore, 8 bits are carried in line, as you can see here, 01. As a result, the 6 lopin compression mechanism has achieved to compress the 40 bytes of the original IPv6 header to 5 bytes. More specifically, we have 2 bytes for the compression header 
and 3 bytes for the non-compressed IPv6 header fields that are carried in line after the IPv6 compressed header. I will now proceed with the second example on an IPv6 global Unicast address. As previously, on the left side we have a typical IPv6 global Unicast address, while on the right side the compressed header. First, the dispatch is placed. As previously stated, for a compressed IPv6 datagram, the binary sequence is 0, 1, 1. Once again, the first field of the original IPv6 header is the version field. The version field can be elided in all cases since only IPv6 is employed. Then we have the TF field. In this case, TF is labeled 1, 1 since all fields in traffic class and flow label are zeros and therefore are elided. Next, the payload length field can be elided, since it can be inferred from the lower layers. Then we have the 1 bit next header field. The NH field comes with the 0, 06 value in decimal, which is the 0, 06 in hexadecimal and it represents the TCP protocol. In this example, an H field is zero since the next header field is not compressed. Indeed, there is no compression mechanism for the TCP yet. Thus, all eight bits for the next header will be carried in line. As you can see here, the 0, 06 value that is carried in line. Next, the value of the hop limit field is 40 in hexadecimal, which is 64 in decimal, and therefore this field can be compressed to 1, 0. The context identifier extension or CID field is labeled with 0 to indicate that no additional CID field is employed. In other words, the prefix is not given by the context. Regarding the SAC and SUM fields, the SAC is labeled 1 since the prefix does not start with FE80 and therefore there is no indication for a link local prefix but rather for a global prefix. Now the SUM field is encoded with 0, 0 since the prefix is not given by the context which indicates that the full IPv6 address must be carried in line thus there is no gain from the compression operation. The multicast compression or M field is equal to zero since there is no indication that the destination address is a multicast address, as you can see here. Then the destination address compression or DAC field is encoded with one since we have a global prefix. Finally, regarding the destination address mode or DAM field, considering that we have a global prefix, this field is encoded with 0, 0, which means that the full IPv6 address must be carried in line and thus there is no gain from the 6 lopan compression operation. Now, considering that the SUM and DAM fields are equal to 0, 0, since both source and destination IPv6 addresses must be carried in line, this represents the worst case scenario in terms of compression efficiency. As a result, the 6 lopan compression mechanism has achieved to compress the 40 bytes of the original IPv6 header down to 35 bytes. More specifically, we have 2 bytes for the compressed header and 33 bytes for the non-compressed IPv6 header fields that are carried in line after the IPv6 compressed header.